Global Warming Explained Our story begins at the beginning of time when man first realized that it was sometimes hot out and sometimes cold out, and that this happened because of this magical thing known as the sun. This was obvious because when the sun was here, it was warm. Somewhere along the way, this bit of knowledge was lost and environmentalism was born. Someone noticed that people didn't like it when it got chilly, so they concocted the idea of global cooling. Yes, that's right. Global cooling. But instead of putting a sweater on, they decided that everyone should suffer through claims of doomsday. Because nothing gets more attention than doomsday. Except in the Bible, where it's conveniently placed at the very end. Well, after the temperature stopped getting chilly and started getting warmer, people stopped paying attention to the environmentalists. Now, environmentalists started to get antsy because they lost their soapbox. Which is surprising that they had a soapbox in the first place, given their bathing habits. So, after years and years of saying that the world was cooling and getting nowhere, they decided to turn 360 degrees around and say that it was actually warming and not cooling. Because if saying it was cold didn't get them attention, surely saying it was warm would. This bit of logic surprisingly worked. After a few decades of not getting anywhere again, a guy named Al Gore, who was a bit bitter for losing a popularity contest, stood up and exclaimed, We are all going to die. Finally, they had generated the right amount of hysteria to serve their purpose. But then another person stood up and said, But how do you know we are all going to die? After scratching their heads for a while, they finally concocted an algorithm to prove themselves right, and quickly made a phallic sketch with some crayons and called it science. They said because ice was melting, therefore it's getting warmer and all the ice would be gone. This would make sense if water didn't also turn into ice, but it looks better if they leave that part out. For further proof, they pointed out that the sea levels were getting higher because things were seemingly falling into the ocean. However, they overlooked something called erosion. Finally, they gave up on science because it was too terribly complicated and decided to go with a more kid-friendly emotional appeal. That is, oh no, the penguins. Won't somebody please think of the penguins? After it caught on and became a bit of a fad, some smart business folks dressed in snappy outfits sat around a large table, because that's what they do in cliché land, and said, Hey, this silly business about the weather sure has caught on. Let's exploit it. But wait, said the obligatory racially different character so as not to seem prejudiced. If we go along with it, it'll hurt progress as a whole. Oh, quiet down, said the obligatory generally different character so as not to seem sexist. It'll help the company in the end, which in turn will help the economy. I have something to say, said the obligatory handicapped character, but nobody listened to him. And so, green marketing was born. Green would actually be a pretty cool color if it wasn't used in such a horrible manner. You could say that green is the prostitute of the colors, selling itself off cheaply to make a quick buck. Now as for a solution to global warming, they say that if we had a cheap, relatively renewable, clean source of power, it would go away. Then, nuclear power burst into the scene, its heavenly green glow illuminating the way to salvation, solving all of life's problems. But, the environmentalists realized that they had a pretty good thing going with this global warming stuff, and had to act. They somehow successfully created another imaginary hysteria against a solution to their previous imaginary hysteria. And so, getting too deep into levels of deceit, I got confused and decided to end this explanation.